Hi again guys and welcome to episode 28 of GT Masters, the review series for GT class race cars and also some vehicles which aren't necessarily strictly speaking GT class machines but that either don't really fall into any other kind of category or that run vaguely similar specs such as the Ferrari FXX. Now in this particular episode we're considering a vehicle that's kind of like that because if this car was actually of the age of the base car then it would technically be in the Days Gone By series but it's not this is a fictional race car with no year attached and as such it doesn't really fall into any other category so like the race version of the classic Camaro we will be featuring this car in this series like the Camaro though this car, which is of course the Dodge Challenger RT race car, kind of falls into a bit of a no man's land. Now its main rival is of course the Camaro race car, but those two vehicles don't really have many natural rivals. You can take them up against of course the actual classic muscle cars, something like the classic Corvette SCCA race car, but apart from that, there really isn't that much which you can genuinely take on with these vehicles. So how do they compare against the kind of cars which you see in the rest of this series? Especially, of course, the fictional ones, being that these cars are Polyphony Digital Originals. Well, on paper, this car stacks up pretty well. It's slightly more impressive, I would say, than the Camaro, at least on paper. The engine is a 7 litre, it puts out 821 horsepower, 812 foot-pounds of torque, and weighs an impressive 1260 kilos, which is not bad at all for a muscle car, especially one which is not particularly small either. That's actually lighter than many of the GT3 or other race cars in this series. It puts out 652 horsepower per ton and has a pretty high PP for a muscle car, 619. And the price is very good. 175,000 credits is a very low price for a race car with this kind of spec. So the question is, do those translate well to actual usable performance? because some vehicles have a lot of power, a high PP, good pricing, but don't necessarily live up to it. Something like, for instance, a NASCAR. NASCARs are good for what they're designed for, but once you take them out of that comfort zone, that power doesn't really give you that much straight line performance, nowhere near as much as you'd actually expect it to. So does this fall into a similar category? Well, to some degree, it kind of does, because although the top speed is not strictly speaking bad, it's not as quick as you might hope. Now the road going version of this particular Challenger can do around 230-235 miles per hour under its own power, which is not bad. It's, it's not one of the quickest muscle cars, but it's certainly not bad. It's good enough for most circuits. This car is slower than that. It does around 200 under its own power, with low downforce, which is not that impressive by Gran Turismo standards for a car with well over 800 horsepower. In real life of course that would actually be realistic because the aerodynamics of a muscle car would make that kind of speed much more difficult to attain but on Gran Turismo aerodynamics clearly mean very little because there are plenty of muscle cars that can go well over 240. So is it any good? Well, the acceleration is strong, as you'd expect from a car with so much power and torque, and the handling is surprisingly good. Muscle cars do get an unfairly bad rep for their handling, and I'm a huge proponent of using muscle cars for competition, especially muscle cars which focus on getting rid of that excess weight, rather than just doing the obvious thing of giving them more and more power. As far as I'm concerned, my philosophy of tuning and use of a muscle car is don't focus on what it's already good at, rather upgrade what it's not good at. So leave the power and speed alone, focus on the handling and braking, and the rest will take care of itself. In the case of this car, it's kind of what they've done with it. 
the straight line performance isn't necessarily any better than you'd expect a muscle car to already be. The handling though, the weight, the braking, the grip, they are what have been significantly improved. And for the price, it is a strong car. The problem is, there just aren't enough legitimate rivals for it on the game. Can it take on GT class machines? Yes, some of them it can. Not for straight line speed, especially top end, but around a twisty circuit, it's a surprisingly competitive car. I would say that this is a better race car than the Camaro overall, and it can certainly take on some of the other cars in this series. It can easily beat the Lotus Elise race cars, it can beat the Spoon Honda S2000 easily in pretty much any vehicle like that, and pretty much any of the lower end polyphony digital original race cars, such as the Honda S2000 race car, the touring cars of a lower spec, it can beat all of those easily. It has more than enough power for that. Just don't expect it to take on something like a Lister Storm, or a Zonda R, or an FXX, or a Nissan GTR anytime soon. It's not a bad car by any means, but it's not a world-class race car. So as far as recommending it, if you're looking purely for a highly competitive race car that will give you a lot of victories, then I quite simply cannot recommend it for that. It does have potential to win races, but not enough races to make it a viable alternative to cars which are just better all-round race cars. If, though, you're a muscle car fan, or you want to do slightly different racing with oddball cars and slightly less obvious choices of race car, then it's an interesting alternative. And it can absolutely wipe the floor with all of the road-going muscle cars, and that's a good thing to bear in mind. But that's it overall for this episode. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.